Southern California experienced a wake-up call on Saturday, September 7, 2024. A series of earthquakes rippled through the region, shaking residents awake. The tremors began shortly after 10 o'clock in the morning. People across San Bernardino, Riverside, and Orange counties felt the ground move. The strongest shaking lasted for about 30 seconds, leaving many feeling rattled. The U.S. Geological Survey quickly went to work. As soon as the tremors were detected, a team of dedicated scientists and seismologists sprang into action. Their mission was clear, to pinpoint the exact location of the earthquake's epicenter and understand the underlying causes of the seismic activity. They analyzed data to determine the source of the tremors. Using advanced technology and sophisticated algorithms, they sifted through vast amounts of seismic data. Each piece of information was crucial in painting a comprehensive picture of the event. The scientists meticulously examined earthquake graphs, seismic activity charts, and real-time data feeds from various monitoring stations. The epicenter, the point on the Earth's surface directly above the earthquake's origin, was located southeast of Ontario, California. This region, known for its geological activity, had experienced minor tremors in the past, but this event was notably more significant. The precise location of the epicenter was determined through triangulation, a method that uses data from multiple seismic stations to pinpoint the exact coordinates. The first quake, a magnitude 3.5, hit at 10.05 a.m. Residents in the area reported feeling a sudden jolt, followed by a series of smaller aftershocks. The initial quake, though moderate in magnitude, was strong enough to be felt across a wide area, causing concern among the local population. A stronger quake, measuring magnitude 3.9, followed at 10.34 a.m. This second tremor was more intense, causing buildings to sway and prompting emergency services to respond. The increased magnitude indicated a significant release of energy, suggesting that the fault line was under considerable stress. Both quakes originated approximately three miles beneath the surface. This depth is typical for earthquakes in this region, where tectonic plates frequently interact. Understanding the depth of the quakes helps scientists assess the potential impact on the surface and predict future seismic activity. The data collected from these events will be invaluable in improving earthquake preparedness and response strategies. These earthquakes were not random events. They occurred along a known seismic zone called the Fontana Seismicity Lineation. This area stretches from Rialto to Fontana. It has a history of producing small earthquake swarms. The recent tremors fit this pattern of activity. Scientists continue to study this fault line to better understand its behavior. The tremors were felt over a surprisingly wide area. People in Fontana, San Bernardino, Riverside, Pomona, and Chino all reported feeling the earth move. The shaking caused alarm and concern. Many people rushed outside seeking safety in open spaces. Social media lit up with reports and reactions. Section 5. A sigh of relief. No immediate damage. Despite the widespread shaking, there was good news. Initial assessments revealed no major damage to buildings or infrastructure. Emergency services did not report any significant incidents related to the quakes. While the tremors were a stark reminder of California's seismic vulnerability, they served as a relatively minor event in the grand scheme of earthquake potential. Section 6. Expert Insight. Dr. Lucy Jones explains. In this segment, we delve into the intricate details of seismic activity with one of the foremost experts in the field. Renowned seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones provided her expert analysis of the event. With decades of experience studying earthquakes, Dr. Jones has become a trusted voice in the scientific community and among the public. She explained that the earthquakes were part of a small swarm within the Fontana seismicity lineation. 
This lineation is a well-known fault system that has been closely monitored by seismologists for years. Dr. Jones emphasized that such swarms are common in this area. She noted that these swarms are typically characterized by a series of small to moderate earthquakes occurring over a short period of time. They rarely result in major earthquakes. Dr. Jones reassured the public that while these swarms can be unsettling, they are not usually a precursor to a larger, more destructive event. Her insights help to calm fears and provide context for the seismic activity. By explaining the science behind these events, Dr. Jones was able to demystify the process and alleviate public concern. She highlighted the importance of preparedness and understanding the natural processes that govern our planet. Her ability to communicate complex scientific information in an accessible way has made her an invaluable resource during times of seismic activity. Earthquake swarms like the one in Ontario are unique. They differ from traditional earthquake sequences. In a typical sequence, there is a large main shock followed by smaller aftershocks. Swarms, on the other hand, lack a single dominant event. Instead, they consist of a cluster of earthquakes of similar magnitudes occurring over a short period. Scientists are still studying the complex mechanisms behind earthquake swarms. Earthquakes are a fact of life in California. The state sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire, a region known for its seismic activity. Over the years, Californians have experienced numerous tremors, some minor and others devastating. The 1906 San Francisco earthquake and the 1994 North Ridge earthquake are stark reminders of the power of these natural events. It's crucial to know what to do when the ground starts shaking. Preparation can make the difference between life and death. Being aware of the right actions to take can help minimize injuries and save lives. Earthquake preparedness is not just about having a plan, but also about practicing it regularly. Remember the phrase, drop, cover, and hold on. This simple yet effective mantra can help you stay safe during an earthquake. It's important to practice these steps so they become second nature when an earthquake strikes. If you are indoors, drop to your hands and knees. This position protects you from being knocked over and allows you to stay low and crawl to shelter if necessary. Dropping to the ground also helps you stay balanced and reduces the risk of falling. Take cover under a sturdy table or desk. This provides protection from falling debris and heavy objects that might be dislodged during the shaking. If no shelter is available, cover your head and neck with your arms and seek protection next to an interior wall away from windows. Hold on to it firmly until the shaking stops. Holding on ensures that your shelter stays in place and continues to protect you. The shaking can be violent and disorienting, but maintaining your grip can help you stay safe. If you are outdoors, move to a clear area away from buildings, trees, and power lines. Open spaces reduce the risk of being injured by falling objects or collapsing structures. Stay in the open until the shaking stops, and be mindful of aftershocks that can follow the initial quake. Always be prepared and stay informed about earthquake safety measures to protect yourself and your loved ones. Being prepared can make a significant difference in an earthquake. Secure heavy objects in your home that could fall and cause injury. Create a family emergency plan and practice it regularly. Have a disaster supply kit ready with water, non-perishable food, a first aid kit, and other essentials. Knowing what to do before, during, and after an earthquake can help keep you and your loved ones safe. Staying informed about earthquake safety is essential. The USGS website provides valuable information about earthquakes, including real-time updates and safety tips. The Earthquake Country Alliance offers resources and preparedness guides for residents living in earthquake-prone areas. By staying informed and taking proactive steps, you can be better prepared for the next earthquake.